Hello and welcome back to Lindell Brakes. Today we're going to be talking about our full floating lug drive rotors. And we're going to be diving into some of the um, mechanical design that make this a very stable way to float a rotor. So with that said, I'm going to start with our first generation of floating rotors. This rotor is probably around 21 or 2 years old and you can see it has a conventional button style floating mechanism. First I'm going to disassemble this so I can show you some of the things about floating a rotor in this manner with the button style. So I have my screwdriver and I'm going to remove these C-clips. There are 10 of these C-clips. Now you can hear the carrier and the friction ring and the buttons are all loose. And I'm going to take the friction ring off now, and I'm going to take the carrier off. Here we have the buttons. Now that we've taken this rotor apart, disassembled for you, I'm going to take one of our lug drive floating rotors. You can hear that it floats. This is a three-piece full floating rotor, so it is a full floater. This one has a helical retaining clip that I'm going to peel out of the back. And I'm going to lift the friction ring off of the carrier stem. Additionally, there's some dampeners, some 3M silicone dampeners that will that are attached, adhered to the carrier center. These can be peeled off. They can be removed. It, it's it's just got a sticky backing, and it sticks right back on there. These are in there to dampen the float that's between the, the carrier and center and the rotor. Oftentimes, a, a button style rotor in our experience would have a lower service life. It would get rattly, it would get loose quite fast as compared to a lug drive floating mechanism. And the reason why is, is uh, much like a clutch basket, these 90 degree engagements are an abutment to the shear load because the shear load goes through these two components at 45 degrees. So having a 90 degree abutment is what reduces the amount of backlash between the friction ring and the carrier when, when square sets up. You'll see some floating rotors that are button style will have a 90 degree abutment in addition to the button. And that's, that's because without that, the carrier and the friction ring actually roll and smash, especially a hollow button like this, uh, down so that it's not completely round and then your backlash is uh, greatly increased and the rotor becomes very noisy and unsafe to use after a while. So, so we switch to our lug drive. You can see that we have gone from 10 points of, of c connection to uh, 20 points of connection. In addition, we engage the entire circumference of of the ID of the rotor. There's not a gap there. So that's an engagement as well. Then we have 20 engagements here, all with a 90 degree abutment. And that's why this is a very, the most stable way to float a rotor actually. You won't find a more stable design for floating a rotor and this has been tested. And it's, it's, it's the same as a, a clutch basket basically. This is where we got the inspiration to make this design. So you can see it, it comes apart, goes together quite easily. Just peel the ring separate the friction ring and the carrier. It goes right back on. We have three styles of friction ring. They all fit on the same carrier. They span multiple ODs, like 11.8 or 11.5 will fit on the same carrier. So that's, that's kind of a cool feature. So button drive versus lug drive, past versus present. For those of you who don't know the difference between a one piece solid rotor versus a floating rotor, or wonder why we float our performance rotors, I'm going to give you a quick explanation. So out here in the outer bandwidth of the, of the disk where it gets the most thermal saturation, where it gets the most heat, thermal coefficient of expansion is the greatest. Down here where it's connected to the hub, a, a big heat sink, and where there's no friction taking place, the thermal coefficient of expansion is much less than it is out here where it's taking thermal saturation and getting quite hot. When you have a, a a high amount of, of 
thermal expansion here and a low amount here, you start to cause internal stresses, stresses in the material. So the molecules are moving around a lot here. They're not moving around so much here. And you start to get internal pressures into the material because the molecules are moving at different rates. So we float our rotor simply to isolate the friction ring, the high point of thermal saturation, we isolate that from the heat sink or the center of the rotor. This allows a uniform rate of thermal expansion for the friction ring while not putting any internal stresses into your center section or your hub. So you have actually much less feedback through your axle with a full floating rotor and you have a, a much higher service life, particularly in extreme braking conditions, in, in hard braking environments like uh, canyons, track days, etc. So this allows again for the thermal coefficient of expansion to be uniform without putting minimal internal stresses on the material. And you can further see where the pad's been riding. So this is a very narrow bandwidth and the portion that's unused is very small by design. So you can see where the bandwidth, where the pad was riding here, and you have all of this material from here that's, that's still at a cool temperature. So again, this is, this is why when this, when this gets very hot as well, it doesn't grow flat and parallel. It's going to take a shape. It, 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 if you really cook one of these up, if you've ever seen a, a one piece rotor fully thermaled, it looks like a wok. It's, it'll be all dished and, and concave. So that's, a, that's another telltale sign of, of the, the material growing very high rate at the OD while having minimal growth rate at the ID. Okay, so there, there are designs where the one piece rotor has a floating mechanism attached to the wheel and there's a very keen design. I'm, I'm excited to show you this. So as I was saying, this is a one piece rotor that floats. You can see these uh, five windows here, and in the five windows, there's four high points. And these high points fit on a, a, a dowel or washer. So here's basically the hat that the, that the disc will ride on. And that's going to go right into to here. You can hear it floats. The hat's going to get a spring washer, much like our button style rotor. It's going to plug in to the disc like this, and then the fastener goes through the eyelet and attaches this to the wheel. Now the wheel, this is a factory Harley wheel, for example, has the boss where this, this all threads into. It's got just enough room for the rotor to have a little bit of lateral movement. I'm going to show you this one example real quick. I've got the fastener attached here, and you can still move the rotor very marginally, probably about 10 thousandths laterally. And so that gives it a little bit of float. And again, the float is, is not for lateral movement. I wanna clarify that, that, that when you float a rotor, it's for, for radial growth, so that it can grow radially without impinging on the hub or the axle. So, so now this rotor is free to grow radially and it can do so up to 200 thousandths of an inch, almost a quarter of an inch. And that's why the caliper bridge, honestly, will ride above the rotor by a, almost, you know, 300 thousandths. And that allows for the radial growth of the disc when it gets very hot, when it reaches thermal saturation. So, so this is a one piece rotor, but it does float on the wheel. And, and additionally, this is a fantastic design because you're attaching the rotor where you're grabbing the rotor so you reduce all of the leverage that it has when you're attached to the hub area and you're grabbing the rotor out here. So, so we've gone down from, from four inches of leverage to one inch. And additionally, the energy from the braking event will be absorbed by the wheel and the axle is isolated from that. That keeps your forks and your caliper much squared up with your rotor. This is critical for smooth linear progression clear to wheel lockup. Okay, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Lindle Breaks. If you like this video, click the like, and then we'll see you next time.